Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and I am Andrew Hess. So today I wanted to talk about three different backends for Power Apps and you know why you should use them, why you shouldn't use them, but all three of these are going to be a, a non-premium license model for Power Apps. So based on the documentation from Microsoft, we have standard connectors available at the non-premium price, right? So that's gonna be your Excel SharePoint. But also, for select O365 licenses, you can utilize Dataverse for Teams. And we're gonna get into that more. So if, if you don't wanna see the Excel SharePoint part, so stay tuned or, or fast forward this video. I will you know, put chapters in and take a look at the Dataverse for Teams option. Uh, it's a newer option, and I really think it's going to start taking over Power Apps. So this is coming from the Power Apps, Power Automate, and Virtual Agent License Guide. So you can find this on Microsoft. I can put this in the uh, properties of the video, too, if you would like to take a look at this document. This document is a living document. It changes all the time. Um, you can see here it was updated June 2022 last time. So once you have this link and you have this documentation, you can come back to it as the licensing changes because Microsoft changes these license models a lot. And so we're not gonna go over the per app plan or the per user plan or any of these. We're just gonna go into the standalone Office 365 license model, which is currently here on page seven. First, let's talk about that one backend that many people use that we always say you shouldn't use, and that is Excel. You know, Excel has a lot of reasons not to use Excel as a backend. One is um, you can only have, I believe, a two megabyte um, file size limit, and there's also delegation issues, but those delegation issues are also seen in SharePoint. But if you wanted to have Power Apps and you wanted it to use Excel, you can store that Excel file in a OneDrive for Business or you can store it in SharePoint. So I'm just going to do it in SharePoint. And it's actually right here. And we're just going to create one, you know, very simple column A, column B, uh, choice, and date. All right, so we created a few columns here. And now I'm going to create a table. So I'm just going to highlight all this, click insert, and say table. And I'll just say my table has its own headers already. All right, and you can rename your table here. So my uh, table rename. And so that's what you're gonna see in Power Apps is you're gonna see the name of that. And then you just maybe wanna give your uh, Excel workbook a friendly name, so um, my friendly name. Okay, so we now have an Excel workbook in our SharePoint site. Let's go to Power Apps. All right, so in Power Apps, we're going to go to the uh, cylinder icon here, or to me, it looks like a database. I'm so used to it. This is the database uh, icon, and we're gonna add Excel. And in here, I have a, a couple document libraries. I'm just gonna choose my out-of-the-box one called Documents. And here is my Excel file, my friendly name. I'm gonna choose that. And it's asking me to choose a table. Well, we renamed that table to my table rename. And then we're just gonna hit OK. And so we can insert an auto-generated ID. I would uh, I would say that's probably a good thing to do. Just go ahead and do that. All right, so now we have a table. We can insert a, let's say, a form, an edit form, and connect it to the data source, and add our fields. And you can see we have title, column A, B, choice, and date. So the one thing about Excel is it's not gonna recognize those uh, columns there. We'll have to convert them later on. So we'll have to convert this to a date field if we want, or column A with a choice field. So say we wanted column A to be a choice. We could go in here and unlock this. Delete here and then just insert a dropdown. If we change the default mode to new, and we press play, we'll see that my columns are one, two, three. So all we have to do is fix these red X's. It's, it's saying, hey, you know, you deleted what we were reading off of before. 
So, I mean, we could easily just delete this or go back to our, I believe it's going to be drop down one. We can just say drop down one here for this red X. And same thing here. So drop down one. So we just need to fix the red X's. It doesn't know, you know, dot text. We remove that. So it's going to be drop down one dot selected dot value. All right, so we've now converted that to a drop down, and we can do the same thing here for date. So we could delete this. You got to unlock it, delete it, input a date picker, and then fix the two things here also. Date picker one and <clears throat> date picker one dot height. I don't know if I could spell right. There we go, and then we're just gonna do date picker one dot selected date okay so now all we need is a button to submit and this is going to be our submit button and we will change this to submit form form one I have not renamed anything we'll press play this is a test column one you know I wrote here choice um, Excel and the date and we hit submit and it's now written to that Excel document so let's we go back to Excel and we can see this first line item here so we have just wrote to Excel that quickly we did power apps and you can see that's that uh, generated ID that we selected before so Power Apps now has a unique ID for all of our line items. All right, and so most of my videos have used SharePoint as the back end. So I would say most of my videos use SharePoint as the back end. Let's just use this um, list right here. I can create one pretty quickly. So we'll do new, new screen. Um, we can go straight to blank. And then we can connect to SharePoint. And the site we want is the My SharePoint Questions, and we'll say My Test List. Okay, and we can do the same thing. So input uh, a form. First, we'll have a form. We'll connect it to My Test List. These are the same columns that were in SharePoint. Um, you can see now we have attachments. So that's, that's one extra part about um, doing it in SharePoint is it comes with an attachment uh, part. But if we come in here and we do create a new button like before and we say submit and we set this up to default as a new form, we can then press play. Did I do submit form? We need submit form. And this is form two most likely. So we can press play, we can form two state required trigger the flow oh well we won't trigger one of these flows that i have before we have a thousand submit and now we have just written to sharepoint so we'll give it a second let it refresh you can see here that i wrote to sharepoint that quickly now it did pick up that this was a cost field so we, we didn't have to do a lot of work there so both of these options right now do not require a premium license in Power Apps. You can do this straight out of the box of Office 365. But, you know, there's some drawbacks to this. There are things called like delegation issues. If you've been working with Power Apps, you do, you are familiar with um, the delegation problem, right? So there's a data lo uh, row limit. And this is mostly for reading. Now you can increase this up to 2000. Um, who knows, maybe uh, Microsoft will increase this someday, but right now they're not going to. Uh, 2,000 is the limit. Um, there are ways to work around this. You know, you can create multiple collections or you can collect uh, sets of data. I believe up to 10,000 rows per collection and then you can um, manipulate the data so you can read more. But this is like a workaround, right? So those are the two backends that most people know about. Now, when I say the words Dataverse for Teams, people think Dataverse, okay? They're not exactly the same. Let's check it out.
So after a quick Google search, I searched up Dataverse um, for Teams versus Dataverse. And how are they different? They are very much different, right? So Dataverse for Teams creates an environment in Teams separate from your Dataverse. So you can see here the limitations, right? Because we're gonna be in this free license model area, there is only one environment per team, one million rows or two gigabytes. I, I think the one million rows, now I'm not gonna promise this, is more of a suggestion. I think what they're saying here is you have a two gigabyte limit and I'll show you that later on. Um, so once you reach this two gigabyte limit of your Dataverse for Teams, uh, you can then upgrade to Dataverse and go into the premium license model. So I just want to give a quick shout out to Shane Young. Obviously, he is, I think, probably the leading Power Apps guy. If you ever search Google, right? Yeah, it's, you see Shane Young. Um, he is going to have a workshop for Dataverse for Teams. I, I will be there. So if you're there, I can't wait to say hi. But um, I do believe this is the way that Power Apps is going in the future. So on September 19th, coming up this month, I will be there um, for this workshop and I'm going to bring back as much information to you as I can. So let's show how to create a Dataverse for Team. So we're in Office 365. You can have your Teams client if you want, but I'm just going to do it uh, here on Teams in the browser. Right? So let's say we're in Teams and we have a team. Let's do a random one. Um, let's try Water Project. Okay. Now here on the left side, you have your apps now some depending on your tenant you know they may disable these power apps um, or some of these uh, apps that I have available but I'm gonna choose power apps so now that I'm in teams and in power apps I can just create a new app and it's gonna ask me where do I want this app to live and I believe we said in the water project so we're gonna put it in the water project and it's going to say, hey, you're the first person to create that app. They're going to create the environment, right? So we're going to create that. And so that's going to take a little bit of time. Now, when you do Dataverse for Teams, it does give you a couple options, right? It does say, with where do you want to start? You want to start with data or with layout? So I'm just going to show you with data and how easy this is, right? So it's going to bring up some of the default uh, data tables that come with your Dataverse for Teams. But what we're going to do is just create a new table. I want to show you how easy this is. This is easy. So it's going to be very similar to SharePoint. So we now have a new Dataverse table. We can come in here and create new columns. So we can do a uh, text column, new column, create. And you notice you don't see it at first, but you can come in here and select all and we'll see that new column there um, you know column a we'll kind of copy what we did in Excel column B we did a choice field and I believe we can change it right here to a choice field if we want we can have our different choices and of course a date field all right, so we've created our, our Dataverse table already. So let's go ahead and exit out. And it's going to build that for us. Isn't that really neat? So already we have a working Power App for using Dataverse for Teams. We can do a new record, type in, and we can type directly right down Dataverse for Teams. They're making it too easy for us. I'm sorry, but... This is easy. We have our choice field, choice one and two, B and A, and we can just hit check and we can write directly to the Dataverse. Now you may not like this format. I mean, we can easily come in here and edit this. We can delete the edit form. We can change the whole layout if we want. We can make this look like a Canvas app. So I just wanted to show you how easy Dataverse for Teams was and it's different than Dataverse. Another thing to know is just because you don't belong to that team doesn't mean you can't use the app. You can easily share with colleagues. You can select this app. And if you have a security group, um, choose the colleagues that can use this 
And then this app will show up in your app store and teams. And so other people can use the form from the app store. So if we come in here and we check out more apps, it should show up in here. So here it is, the Water Project app. This is the app that um, we just created in Microsoft Teams. So now other people outside of your team can use your app. It's huge. This is awesome. And I love it what Microsoft is doing here. So I hope this video was helpful. We went over a couple of the standard connectors, Excel and SharePoint, but then there's also Dataverse for Teams. So I would I recommend everyone to kind of study up on Dataverse for Teams. This is the direction that Microsoft wants to go for the people who are using the standard license model. Um, so I'll keep you guys up to date. I'll talk to you soon. Uh, I'm going to be on vacation next weekend, but I'll see you the next. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.